Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Megs on the broadcast today. John Osagura joins us. He's former speaker of the Nevada Assembly and a principal with Strategies 360. He's here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are delighted to welcome back to the program John Osagera. He's former speaker of the Nevada Assembly, uh, now a, a leading member of Strategies 360, um, also born and raised in Fallon. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. It's good to be here, Sam. Um, so we're taping this on the morning of June 10th, so we only have partial results from the election so far. It's going to probably, Secretary of State's office says, probably 10 days before we have the final numbers. Um, but what are your thoughts on the initial results so far? What races are jumping out at you? Well, I think it was, a, it was an interesting uh, evening. Uh, it's kind of, I, I would uh, attribute it somewhat like some early voting. I, I think there's enough vote in that we can probably have a pretty good idea of who's going to win and who's not. Um, you know, about 50%, it looks like, of the vote in. So that's kind of short of what you'd have on early voting. But um, there was a couple surprises. Uh, I was surprised at the Supreme Court race and Ozzy Fumo um, didn't do better in that race. Uh, I was, there was a few Democratic Assembly uh, candidates that uh, were endorsed candidates, I think maybe two or three that uh, didn't clear the hur hurdle. Um, down here in uh, Clark County, it was uh, interesting to see the lead that uh, Assemblyman McCurdy has in the county commission race. Um, trying to think what else. I think, oh, uh, Ellen Spiegel um, put away the competition there pretty pretty handily in that state senate race that was, uh, you know, it was a big deal for everybody uh, on, on the D side anyway. Um, and that will be an interesting race, you know, going forward. But yeah, there's a few that, uh, but not not any real big surprises. Did you, uh, any big surprise? Well, I had the Reno, uh, up in Reno, Reno City Council. I thought that uh, 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 Britain uh, would do much better in that race too, endorsed by the mayor. Uh, and it looks like she's coming in third at this point. Um, yeah, uh, just one more for on the county commission. Um, the return of Ross Miller. Yes. Yeah, Ross Miller uh, did really well in that. Uh, it's a Democratic district, you know, so I think Ross is probably the favorite. Um, he's up against a city councilman down here in Strong Los Anthony uh, who's going to be tough and is going to campaign hard and has a lot of uh, money in the bank. But I think that uh, that district has leaned pretty heavily D, and so I would say Ross is the favorite there. Well, and it's also been a Democratic Clark County Commission for a long time now. It has. Uh, uh so, so, so how do you think that the, the mail-in ballot has affected this race? Because it seems to me that with the candidates not able to go and knock on doors, that's been a big hurt on anybody new running for office. Yeah, 
you know, yes and no. I would say, uh, obviously, we would always advise people, you got to knock on that door, you got to have the person to person contact. But everybody was at home. And digital went way up, right? The people, what people were looking at on their phones, on their computers at home, on their laptops, uh, the, the price of digital went down and the, you know, the, uh, what people were looking at, at went way up. So I think uh, smart candidates were able to use uh, social media and digital forums to, to get the message out. Well, and, uh, and it's interesting you made that comment because um, uh, Britton Griffin, who you were talking about there, who was running for Reno City Council, had a superb um, Facebook presence, social media presence, and yet, as you said, at this point, running third. So, I mean, I think it's a toss-up. Um, the, um, you know, and it brings into question, once again, um, the, the value of social media in terms of competing with the old traditional ways like um, you know broadcast television, cable television, advertising um, that has been in the forefront for so many years. We've seen more and more money going into digital. Um, but you know you see the name, but it's so easy to scroll past it. It's easier to scroll past a, um, a, a digital message online than it is to, uh, to fast forward through a TV commercial. Um, I, I don't know, I'd get your thought on that. Well, you know, it's all about name recognition at the end, end of the day, right? So if you recognize that name, so it's the same third with mail, right? If you're sending a piece of mail to a person's home that you know is an inveterate voter, you want them to read your stuff, but uh, if they read your name and throw it in the trash uh, and they remember your name, that's probably uh, okay too. So, you know, even though people are scrolling through, if their friends are posting stuff about certain candidates, I think it, I think it's an effective medium. I, I, um, we used to have a kind of a split on what we would do mail versus digital and it's flip flopped. So the digital is now a higher percentage and it used to be mail was a higher percentage. So I, I think that, you know, people are pretty connected on the, on social media these days. Oh yeah, no, no, I, I, no argument there. Um, the, um, um, but the, you made an interesting comment there, which is, and we've known this for years, that direct mail essentially goes into the hands of one person in a household who then walks it to the trash. Um, but, but your point is really well made. Uh, you know, if you think of Chick Hecht's campaign for Senate back in the day, um, and you know, I'm definitely old enough to remember that, um, we didn't see Chick Hecht. We didn't hear Chick Hecht. All we saw were giant billboards in Republican colors with his name up there. And, um, and, and he won that Senate seat, uh, only one term, but it, it was purely on name recognition. So I'm not sure that you're, you're wrong in terms of if you just put somebody's name on a card and put it in the mail, that that's affecting the person who picks up that piece of mail, they're gonna see the name and then they're gonna get name recognition. I think that's a really good point. Yep. Uh, kind of scary though. It's kind of scary, yeah. It is very kind of scary. You know, um, I remember the- yeah, one the, more race I, I was just thinking too, I noticed uh, Assembly, uh, Assemblyman Edwards uh, in the South, uh, looks like he's gonna be defeated uh, in the primary. So, you know, with the potential of an upcoming special session, that would make an interesting position for him to be sitting, <laughs> sitting a legislator who you know has lost uh, going into a, a special session. So, but you know, and also just one more point on that. Uh, I, I got to tell you, I mean, technology as we're doing right now has really been uh, keeping people connected. You know, I mean, we're connecting now through Zoom. Uh, you know. We use Google. We do all sorts of, of different teams, and all you know. So I think people are more and more connected, um, and technology is really playing a huge role in keeping what's left of the economy running. Right. Um, you know, uh, you bring up a really interesting point. Um, you know, obviously, uh, if we have a special session and we know certain people are not coming back, um, if you saw the movie Lincoln, um, you know, and the emancipation of slaves. Uh, you know that um, you know a lot of uh, interesting work was done behind the scenes to get the votes for that because it was a lame duck session of Congress. Um, here, at least, the governor is the one in control of of what the topics would be for a special session. So, how much concern do you have that there could be monkey business going on 
at a special session um, when the governor has this much control? Well, he has a, a you're right. I mean, uh, the executive branch has a lot of control. However, in the special session, the governor can't just call the legislative council bureau and say, draft this bill. He's got to have legislative leadership buy off on the bills that are going to be drafted. He can draft it. He can obviously set the agenda uh, and say, this is the topics that we're going to address, but he has to have legislative leadership buy in on things. I, you know, as my colleague, uh, Marcus Conklin, who was the majority leader when I was a speaker and now works with me at Strategy 360, says there's a, there's no winners in a special session. There's just degrees of losers. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, uh, I would, you know, normally a special session, you want to get in and get out. Um, Nevada residents don't like to see it when the legislature's in session, and especially in a special session, they do think that monkey business goes on. And so I would hope that they have some agreement before they go in and when they, they got in and, or they get in and get out quickly. Um, some tough decisions to be made though, you know, and uh, today, uh, as you said, we're taping on the 10th, the, the uh, economic forum meets. So we'll have a, a little better idea this afternoon on what, uh, what those numbers are going to be. Uh, I know that you probably saw the governor put out his recommended cuts yesterday. Uh, and, you know, that's probably not going to be enough. And I don't know, you know, the, Economic Forum is really kind of a crystal ball at this point because, you know, how can you really know what's going to be the, you know, where we're going to be at a year from now? Very, very, very difficult to predict. All right, John, let's take a break. We'll come back and uh, lots more with John Osagera after this timeout. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with John Osagera. He's the former speaker of the Nevada Assembly and a principal with Strategies 360. Um, you were saying that um, the numbers that the governor came out with, likely not enough in terms of cuts. Um, Bill Denser uh, summed it all up in the Review Journal this morning, uh, saying that uh, Nevada is expected to uh, uh, enact $812 million in state budget cuts this week, a 4% rollback in nearly all areas of the state driven by the COVID-19 pandemic. That includes a $265 million reduction in outlay for K through 12 schools. Um, you, you were there before when we were going through the recession. You've seen how this, this plays out. What are your biggest concerns with these budget cuts and, and it, it appears to me that there is no remedy except, you know, the Las Vegas Strip roaring back. Yeah, it is very, um, it's a very bleak situation. As you mentioned in 2011, uh, you know, we were 52%, 51, 52% in a budget deficit uh, after coming out of the housing crisis and that, that um, really tough time. And this is going to be much much worse than that. Now, there's some positive indicators out there. I mean, I, I, you know, I think that we're going to recover much quicker, but you know, a lot of that is just 
pure speculation, you know? So um, my biggest concern is a lot of these programs uh, get decimated. Um, I hope that there's some more federal recovery. Uh, and I think that's, you know, part of the reason that it'll be difficult for, uh, to have a special session without figuring out what kind of federal money's coming in. Um, you know, they've swept the 400 million out of the rainy day fund. You see the cuts that they've announced already. Um, I, I, I think they got to really figure out how much, how much money's coming in from the, on the fed side. Um, cause some programs like Medicaid, for example, if there's big federal dollars coming in there, you know, maybe you don't have to make as much as deep cuts and things that are very essential like that. Um, Similarly, education, or like you mentioned, that's, you know, that'd be a, a, tra a travesty, in my opinion. It'd be terrible to cut, a, to cut education, uh, um, again, after now, just making some gains. And it's very similar to what happened to us uh, in that 2007 to 2011 period of time when we, uh, you know, had made some gains in a lot of different areas, a lot of different programs, and, and just to see them all completely wiped out. So uh, I, I hope and I pray that... Uh, our, our, um, the gaming engine comes roaring back, you know, sales tax is going to be completely wiped out for the last couple months. So those numbers are yet to be seen and, uh, they're not really going to be seen today, uh, probably for another 30 days on what, you know, sales tax numbers, you know, what happened to sales tax numbers over the last two months where there was, you know, no business happening. So let me ask you this from a technical point of view. Um, so the governor has said that, that these are the cuts he wants to enact, that he's already worked with um, his uh, agencies to come up with these numbers. Uh, do, can, does the interim finance committee have the ability to go ahead and say, yes, we approve this? And, you know, because, you know, on a party line vote, they could get it done if they wanted to. Um, or, or, or does it have to go to a special session to approve these kind of cuts? Well, well, generally, general terms, I think the Interim Finance Committee can uh, do most of this work. However, there's always something that comes up. Uh, when federal money comes down, the way that they, you know, write the legislation, our state legislation isn't, you know, uh, doesn't line up perfectly and you've got to change a statute to accept money or to move money. For example, some of these sweeps, um, may be not be able may not be able to be done by uh interim finance there's always a uh something that we haven't thought of that then you have to go in and change to make sure that the money can be moved around so i would i don't know exactly what it is but i'd anticipate that there's going to be something that they have to change that needs legislative action okay and and this is just for this fiscal year correct this is not for the next fiscal year yeah, well, this fiscal year starting in July. Okay, so so it's not stuff that we've already dealt with. This is this is the second half of the biennium. Okay, all right. So now, but we're looking at a potential for a billion dollars more in losses coming up. So I mean, this is just a start. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's just uh, some really really tough tough choices. And again, uh, you know, I. I I hope that there's some federal money coming in a fourth or third, fourth package, whatever they're on now, <laughs> um, to the state and local governments because, uh, you know, they're just going to be wiped out. There seems not a lot of interest in the Senate to rush this, that they want to look at, um, and I'm talking about the United States Senate, obviously, um, that they want to uh, see, the, you know, what has happened with the economic stimulus that's been passed so far. Um, but as somebody who, you know, worked both at the legislature and behind the scenes now, uh, this is uh, an amazing Christmas tree for the lobbying industry, is it not? If, you know, if you're a lobbyist in D.C., I mean, this is Christmas time. Yeah, um, yeah yes and no. Um, I would say, uh, first, Sam, I think it's better when one house is Democrat and one house is Republican because better decisions get made and there has to be some negotiation there. Um, but, uh, so that's, that's one thing. I think that they'll get better legislation because you have, uh, you know, Democrats controlling one house and Republicans controlling the other, but yes, then it, uh, that it does increase the influence of, uh, special interest groups. And, uh, certainly everybody will be looking to protect what they have. Um, maybe not get more, but don't cut me. 
So yeah. Um, do you think that we're going to end up seeing um, loans from the federal government to the states as we did with uh, uh, Medicaid funding in Nevada uh, during the Sandoval administration where we borrow money from the federal government to balance our budget and then pay it back at a later date? Yeah, I, I, you know, that, of course, we've been, you know, history does repeat itself. So I would say that that's a, a possibility for sure. And that's probably a compromised position that... Uh, that may may come out of this. Um, do, do you think it's ironic that the Fed chairman and the Fed governors are all saying, whatever you need, we will give you. We will print as much money as is necessary. And yet the president and the Congress, especially on the Republican side, are taking a wait and see attitude. Do, do you think that that's a mistake to not be listening to the Fed from the policy point of view? Yeah, you know, uh, that's an interesting situation because, uh, you know, normally you wouldn't have the executive branch or the president uh, trying to influence the, the, the Fed. And in, in this case, I think that he has. He's been talking about negative interest on home loans and different things like that, that, you know, usually the Fed works pretty independently. So I'm not sure what to take, what the take on that is. You know, it, it is different than we have ever experienced before. Uh, the kind of meddling in, in the Fed that hasn't normally happened. So I don't know what the answer is, Sam. I, I'll be honest, I don't. <laughs> we, we all need to renew our subscription to Crystal Balls. Let's take another break. We'll be back with John Osteguera after this timeout. Hey guys, are you watching the game at a friend's or the bar again because you can't watch at home with your wife? Or worse, because she kicked you out and kept your couch, your flat screen, and your kids? What's the one thing a man needs when he loses a good woman? A good lawyer. And when he loses a bad woman, he needs a great lawyer. What makes a good woman a bad woman? You tell me. You're the one that can't watch the game in your own home. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York, and I represent men in divorce, custody, and family law matters. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at REMAX Realty Affiliates. A lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take an Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with John Osagera. He's the former speaker of the Nevada Assembly, a principal with Strategies 360. So, you know, with the cuts we're already seeing to the school districts, um, you know, the, the, the uh, head of the Department of Education, uh, Joan Ebert, was on the program last week and talking about social distancing in classrooms, social distancing on school buses. How in the world are we going to be able to manage that just from a cost basis, from a practical basis? We don't have enough bus drivers. We don't have enough buses. We don't have enough classrooms. Your thoughts? Well, I tell you what, I, you know, I, I, I don't envy Joan and her job. And Joan's doing an amazing job uh, there at the Department of Education. But I've talked to some of the folks here at the school district in Clark County. And, um, I, you know, there's all sorts of plans out there for, you know, alternating days. Uh, you know, half the day morning or afternoon shift uh, to get that social distancing. I, uh, you know, I'm aware that the governor today is going to come out with uh, uh, some youth sports activity uh, opening up for baseball and different uh, youth activities. And so that'll be interesting to see how that works out too, to see if we have any spikes. Um, well, they've got a big challenge ahead of them, but I, we've got a lot of smart people working in a lot of smart places or in, a, in the right places, and I think they'll figure it out. But it may not be the same as we've always seen it. Uh, you may be, you know, working in shifts. You may be going on Tuesday, Thursday. You may be doing part uh, virtual, part 
uh, you know, you know, back to my technology, <laughs> you might be doing a lot more work on, on the computer as a student in public schools these days than you had in the past. Do you, and, and obviously this is a worldwide problem, so it's not just the United States, but do you think this particular year of school is going to be a cost to those students for the rest of their lives? They'll never get that year back. Well, I tell you what, it does worry me. I've got three young ch children, uh, 10, eight, and six. And, uh, uh, you know, we have implemented a summer reading program. Maybe I should have done that anyway. But, you know, we're trying to make sure that they're doing math and reading uh, throughout the summer because we're concerned that they did lose some time um, and that this generation, you know, may, may be affected adversely because of that. And so I, I as a parent... I'm concerned, and so we're we're trying to implement things around our house to keep them uh, motivated, reading out loud, and um, you know, looking at menus and adding up the prices, and you know, we're doing all sorts of fun things. But I don't know that all parents have the time or the ability to do to do all that. So I am worried about that. All right, and that's where we got to leave it. Hey, John, it's great to see you. Great to have you on the program. Please come back soon. Absolutely, it's great great to be back. Thank you, and we'll be right back. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culpa Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at briancolpaphotography.com. Ah! Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they were. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. You can now watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search for Nevada Newsmakers and become a subscriber. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Thanks for watching and listening.